seats. I guess I don't like that angle. There we go. Hey, peeps. Just getting my, let's see. Getting my angles right, getting my angles right. Let's see, there we go, good. All right, all right, it is day three. <laughs> Had a four minute. Let me double check my notes here as everybody's getting prepared to log on to, we did day one, day two, yes, day three, day three of Be Still Devotional Growth Workbook and Bible Study. We are on day number, week number four, day number two. No, I'm sorry, day number three. Week number four, day number three. And so we are in the tactical of faith this week. Look, Jen. <laughs> now, I did, I'm, I'm, between me and you, I'm going to do surprises, so I'm not going to say what this is. But um, anyway, week number four, day number three of the tactical of faith. And we are walking out, be still. Hey, Cherry. We are walking out, be still which is a directive from God, which encompasses seven tacticals, um, surrender, submission, obedience, faith, prayer, praise, and worship. And we are on week four, which would be one, two, three, four, tactical four, which is faith. And so we have just been walking out, studying out the word of God, Bible study, which means we are literally studying the Bible. We are pulling apart and taking apart things and just learning and growing and um, just really having a wonderful time. I'm having a wonderful time teaching this. Hey, Mama Leslie, and having a wonderful time learning and uh, just getting prepared for this. So I, I got for everyone that's joining, I tagged every, I tried to remember Everyone that has been following consistently, I tagged everyone when I uploaded the rest of, um, I feel like I got like super big bangs, like they're way up there, or my forehead is just shiny, something, but um, I tagged everyone, what's going on with that, I tagged everyone earlier to let you know that I finished workbook number four i was a couple of days behind on that but i got all of workbook four up so i tagged everyone you should have access to that download last night we had uh, day number two so we studied out day one and day number two and now we are moving on to day number three which you did get your assignment for day number three which was just in your bible which we are picking up with a continuation in hebrews 11 11 and 1 is our theme our foundation scripture this week and we are just studying all of hebrews chapter 11 which is known um as the faith chapter and so last night your assignment was to pick up we stopped at 15 last night and your assignment was to pick up with 16. And I said to go ahead and read all the way through. I said 39, but it actually has 40 uh, scriptures in Hebrews 11. And I said, go ahead and read all the way through. And tonight we're going to, because as I was putting together the rest of the workbook, the Holy Spirit showed me something and broke down sections of Hebrews 11. Um into different themes and so we will have one more reading assignment tonight which if you did what I said to do which was read all the way through you're just going to go over a specific section tonight in the reading and we'll continue to break that down so tonight we're going to recap worksheet 18 was which was the beginning of Hebrews 11 1 through 15 and then we will study we'll move on to worksheet 19 16 through 31 tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and get into prayer and we're going to go ahead and get into study and see what God has for us tonight. All right, let's go into prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before your throne right now, God. Father, just giving you all praise, glory, and honor because you are the great I am. And God, we thank you for yet another opportunity to come together in fellowship, to come together to study and just learn your word and hear your word and yield to your voice as we 
hear what you have to speak to us, Father God. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you, God, first and foremost, we come before you and we lay down anything that has burdened or hindered us this day. We put off any distractions. We lay it at the altar. We place it at Jesus' feet. For he said to cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. So in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we just lay down everything, Lord God, anything, even any excitement throughout the day, Lord God, if it's anything that Lord God will distract us from receiving your word, we just lay it down, Father, and we, Lord God, tune in our hearts and our ears. Father, to hear you speak, Lord God, to hear you minister the, the very words that you have to us, Lord God. We are ready and willing and capable and able to receive that, Father God, and we look forward to that. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I thank you that on tonight, as you are walking us through this tactical of faith, Lord God, that you continue to increase us in our faith. For you said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So as we get into the word of God, increase us, Lord God, increase our understanding, increase our wisdom, Father God, increase our knowledge, Lord God, increase our thirst and our hunger and desire, Father God, to be filled. For you said if we thirst and hunger, we should and would be filled, Father God. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bind distractions. I bind technical difficulties. I bind anything, Lord God, that would cause discord or stir up misunderstanding, Lord God. And I pray and I loose and I release an understanding, Lord God, of your words. Give us clarity, make it plain and simple that we receive it in our hearts, Lord God, and that the word is rooted and grounded, Lord God, that we may meditate on it continually, that we may keep it, Lord God, and make it applicable to our daily lives our comings and goings, our inner and outer workings, Father God, that we may, Lord, not only utilize it in our lives, but that we may utilize it and be used, Lord God, to impact, impart, and affect, Lord God, all those around us, our situations and our scenarios, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. Father, I thank you for each and every ear that will hear. I thank you for every eye that will see those on now and those to come, Lord God. And I just thank you that as we go, Lord God, we go away, Lord God, with a peace, with a prosperous understanding of your word, Lord God, and just continuing to seek you, Lord God, as we be still to learn to move forward. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. All right. Hey, Monica. Alrighty, so we are going to get, I'm going to jump right in because I have a prayer call tonight and I'm going to get a little bit of rest before that, but we got some good word to study tonight. So last night we uh, did um, worksheet number 18. Hey, Arthenia, we did worksheet 18. Hey, hey, Mama Phyllis, worksheet 18, which again, we covered... Hebrews 11, 1 through 15. And so again, I was saying last night, I had pages one and two for the workbook, and I went ahead and got three uploaded. So if you're just joining us in the profile, you'll see where it says there's a download. So you understand where I'm teaching from and you can follow along. You can pull it up on your cell phone. You can pull it up on your laptops or your tablets. You can, hey dad, you can pull it up um, and print it. But you, if you don't print it, you can just download it. But just know that I am teaching from the workbook. So you understand where I'm coming. If you're going, what is she talking about? Where is she teaching from? The profile, the bio is in the, uh, the link is in the bio, the profile bio. And so I'm going to recap worksheet 18 from last night. I'm looking over there. So let me, and work when I was, when I was finishing the rest of this workbook for this week today, what the Lord showed me was we've been reading Hebrews 11, uh, all of that, the faith chapter, and he actually broke it down. So when you look at worksheet 18 from last night if you had the download from last night it just said it would just say now faith is but as I was going through he had me to put a caption on each of these and I went through he had me stop and just basically categorize them so last night and the thing about God is so good because I recall specifically talking about obeying so remember last night we talked about we learned on day one and day two that our faith wrapped up in our faith is our obedience our faith requires obedience and our obedience requires faith and so last night as we were studying out the word 
obedience was a theme that came up and he's when I was putting the workbook together I went back and captioned and so day one and day two we learned that our faith is now when we talked about our foundation scripture which is Hebrews 1 11 and 1 that says now faith is um, the evident the confidence and trust the evidence of things not seen our now faith we learned that our faith must stay in the now so we are conditioning and training and teaching ourselves that when we speak of faith we're not talking about something that we're going to obtain we're not talking about something that's in the far distance we are talking about faith our now faith is present now means right now meaning we have it with us at all times and so when we talk about our faith we are from now on going to condition and train ourselves to not just say well my faith or faith we're going to say that now faith so that we can stay in the present with whatever we are speaking or believing or thinking so that we don't wane and wander on our faith we don't become stagnant it stays in the now so as we're going through these worksheets we have uh last night worksheet 18 what we went over was obedience our now faith and the scriptures that we learned on last night involve obedience and so tonight what we're going to cover and read my journal notes which I have a notebook I kind of ping pong back and forth so I have notebooks and all kind of things tonight we're going through 11 16 through 31 and we're going to cover that now faith is perseverance and remember when we talked about the word is we said that when is is there is is the word is is a connecting word it pulls together what was which with what will be so i gave the example of takia is a woman jesus is lord that word is connected and it tells what was with what will be or what is and so when we talk about now faith is what we're going to study out tonight is now faith also involves perseverance it's perseverance so let's get into the word and see how our faith is going to teach us to persevere okay Alrighty. So, so we're going to pick up with 11 and 16. And I have notes all over the place. So if you see me just kind of moving. So I said I teach from the comfort of my bed. <laughs> I can spread everything out and sit crisscross Indian style. But I'm just like here to the left and here to the right and here in my lap. But I've tried different places. But honestly, I'm, I'm having wardrobe malfunctions with my hair tonight um i tried outside i tried over at the desk i tried sitting curled up on the couch the bed is the absolute most comfortable place for me and it just works so if you see me moving shifting around that's what's going on so let's see we're gonna pick up with 11 and 16 yes 11 and 16 and then also for anyone new following along traditionally we read from the king james by King's James, King James KJV. I teach from the NIV New International Version because it is clear and precise and understandable for those that are new in the faith. You can follow along in the King James. I'll go back and forth between speaking scripture from the KJV, but I will be teaching from the NIV. All right. So 11:16 says, and let me let me just recap from 15 so you know what we're talking about. We said in 1115, I'm going to back up to 1114, I'm going to back up to 1113. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. 14. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. 15. And if they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have been, would have had opportunity to return. So we closed out with that last night. Let me pick up with 16. It says, instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. And again, if you follow along your workbook, and if you don't have the workbook and you're just following your Bible, Highlight your workbook pages are going to be highlighted in red the things that I want to go over and um, if you're just looking from your Bible highlight in 1116 longing for a better country either underline it highlight it circle it 
get your attention to it. Longing for a better country. And then God is not ashamed to be called their God. God is not ashamed to be called their God. Okay. So when we have faith, how does that tie into faith? 1116. When we go back to 15 and it talked about, you know, yesterday we talked about Abel and he offered a better sacrifice than Cain because of his faith. We talked about Sarah who had faith to believe that the word spoken to her that she would have a child would come to pass. We talked about Abraham whom God said, I want you to leave and go to a land and I want you to go and worship and take and sacrifice your son, your only son that I promised you. Um, We talked about all these people who had faith and it says in 11, um, 13 that they saw it from a distance they they saw these they saw these promises they hadn't received them in in advance they didn't get anything that says look here i'm going to give you this and this is motivation and encouragement to get to where you need to be it didn't work like that basically they were told go and then you'll get the promise and so the way that god works in our faith is that he's quite the opposite. A lot of times we don't get to see, we don't get to see things until it has come to fruition until there's the manifestation of it. So when we go to 1116, it we're keeping in mind what we read yesterday, we're talking about how these people, they were given the they were not given any physical promise, but they still were motivated by their faith. And it says had they had the opportunity to go back to the land that they were, it would have been taken had it not been for their faith. It says, but instead, they were longing for a better country. So your faith, your faith causes you to long for what God is calling you to. Remember, we talked about Psalm 37 and 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. They delighted themselves in God. They he planted desires and in that desire there was a longing for something better there was a longing for a better country and it says a heavenly one it was from god it was an an unction that walked by faith and not by sight and he says god is not ashamed to be called their god so when we have faith god says i'm not ashamed of you remember let's go back to um i'm gonna kind of go back and forth so that i connect these together But we talked about Abel, who brought God a better offering. And he said, because of his faith, God commended him as righteous. So remember, it also says uh, in 11.6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. God says, he who comes to him, he is rewarder of him who comes to him and diligently seeks him. So God says, I am not ashamed to be called your God. When you delight yourself in me, when you seek me, when you step out on faith, when you are hoping in a promise that I've not even given you, I'm not ashamed to be called your God. I'm going to reward you. And I am downloading a desire for something better. And that is what our faith does. 11 and 17. By faith, Abraham... When tested him, when God tested him, offered Isaac. So I have highlighted by faith Abraham, and then I have the word offered. And he says, by faith, Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice. By faith, Abraham is highlighted, offered is highlighted in a sacrifice. When you pull those together, you're going to see by faith, Abraham offered a sacrifice. Remember we talked about, it says he who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Let's talk about that for a little bit. So it says by faith, Abraham, when God tested him, he offered. So God's, so our faith, our faith is going to cause us to be tested. There will be tests that come in the, it, there will be tests that come in the midst of our faith. In Abraham's test, as an example there, it says, he who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. What was the promise? Let's, let's look at that. Abraham already had to have faith in God to believe in him for Isaac. That was a promise. 
his faith and acted. Okay. And we talked about this yesterday when I gave the example of the bridge. And I said, when you go across, no matter how you go across the bridge, whether you walk, whether you drive, whether you decide to go in the, the body of water, swim, boat, however you decide to above, above the water, over the bridge, some in some way, shape or form by air, you still have to go across. And when you go across, then you get, you turn around and you see that your faith in whatever it was got you across and that increases your faith. And then because your faith is increased, the next time something similar comes around, you have more faith for it. 1117 is like that with Abraham. God basically said, have faith in me. I'm going to, I'm going to bless your wife with the child. I'm going to bless you with the son. God, Abraham endured what was necessary patiently endured, patiently waited, patiently believed, faith, patiently had confidence and a hope in something that had no proof. He got the proof. He got the promise. He obtained the promise. He got the son. And then God turns around and says, okay, guess what? Now I want you to give me the promise. I want you to give me what I gave to you. He had already had faith for the son. Now God is saying, I need more faith. I need obedience and I need more faith. And I need you to sacrifice, make a sacrifice unto me. And so we talked about how faith, what's the word, Holy Spirit? Faith, faith enacted will require sacrifice that in the long run, in the end point, will increase your faith in God more. So understand when you are believing in God for something, when you are walking out and standing on your faith, that tests and trials will come and that God is watching you to see your measure of faith. How much more measure of faith can he increase you in a thing? And that's what happened here with Abraham in 11 and 17. God was looking at his measure of measure of faith and was intending to increase his faith even the more. 11 and 18. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Okay? Even though, underline or highlight 1118, even though God had said to him. Because remember, we just talked about God said, hey, Abraham, I'm going to bless you with a son. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you the promise. And he got it. And then he turned around and asked for the promise. And so it says, even though God has said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. So what is he saying? Abraham didn't for a minute doubt that God would do what he said he would do. Even though he believed and he received the promise, he was now having to enact more faith because the very thing that God had promised him would be an outlet and a conduit to the next level of blessing was the very thing that God was asking him back for asking him for back now. That makes sense. So when we have faith, don't doubt for one minute that when God blesses you with the thing, that there won't come a time that God will test you in that thing as well. And remember, when God tests us, it is because he is watching. Remember, he's watching. He's searching to and fro the whole earth for those whose heart is right towards him. He never wants to take from us. God is a God who wants to give. God is a God of increase. God is a God, Ephesians 3 and 20, who does exceeding above abundantly above all that we can ask, expect, or think according to the power that worketh in us. He's going above what we can think. He's going above anything that we can ever imagine. His ways are higher than ours. So when he says, have your faith in me, not in the thing. Remember, we talked about our faith. We do not put our faith in the thing. We put our faith in the God who is able to bless us with the thing. And so Abraham never for a moment took his faith off of God, even though God blessed him in the things that he wanted and desired. 11 and 19 says Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And in so a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead. So again, Abraham reasoned. He did not 
refute. He did not dispute. I'm highlighting Abraham reason that God could even raise the dead. So Abraham's faith yet again was what I just said. His faith was in God. He didn't, his faith didn't waver. When he says he reasoned, he reckoned, he stood firm in the fact he basically pondered within himself. Well, God gave me a promise. God gave me a word of a promise. God blessed me. God said, have faith. Put your faith in me. I'll give you a son. God performed that. Abraham's faith increased. God said, give me that son. Abraham reasoned. Well, God told me that through my son, this is how he will bless. What do you say? Through that. The promises. Where am I at? I'm sorry. Through, that it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. He had promised generations and generations. He said, you know, your seed will be numerous like this, the sand. This is his son, his only son. And this is another promise that God's given him. Abraham did not get caught up in the natural things. He did not try to think ahead of God. It says he reckoned, well, if God said it, that means God will do it. And God, if he has to raise this thing from the dead, then he will do that. There's a lot of things that we need to stay focused on God and allow him and reckon that, you know what, God, my faith is in you as such that if this thing is dead, that I've been, leave, been believing in you for, that I've been praying to you for, that I've been thinking about reading scripture, standing on the word, sowing a seed, and I just don't see how it's going to happen. We just need to reckon and reason just like Abraham did that God can bring a thing back from the dead. We talked about in Ezekiel 37, speaking to the dry bones. And God said to Ezekiel, son of man, can these dry bones breathe again? Ezekiel said, God, you know, your faith should be as such that don't try to get in the natural way of thinking when God says, keep your faith and your trust in me. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. All right. 11 and 20. By faith, Isaac blessed. Highlight by faith. Highlight or underline. I'm highlighting. By faith, Isaac blessed. Jacob and Esau in regard to their future in regard to their future so what does our faith do for our future when we have faith and focus again in God it's a blueprint for our future God says for Isaac by faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future and if you recall um well you know what I won't get off the beaten path basically our faith is a platform when God says I will do a thing I will work a thing our faith has to stay focused on him by faith Isaac blessed in regard to their future so our faith goes forward and reaches into our future and pulls into the present tense our now faith remember that our now faith it stays focused and it will bless in reference to our future 11 and 21 by faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshiped as he leaned on top of his staff. Highlight by faith, Jacob, and then highlight worshiped. By faith, Jacob worshiped. Our faith requires and inspires us to worship. Because again, our now faith, we keep it in the present tense. When we keep our focus of our faith in God, remember it's my faith coupled with being in God. My faith is not placed in the thing. My faith is not placed in the situation. My faith is not placed in the person. My faith is placed in God. And when we keep it focused in God, our faith causes us to worship. Our faith draws us nigh unto him. He says, draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you, meaning near. And it says, by faith, Jacob worshiped. So your faith, and when we get into worship, I'm going to stretch out here. When we get into worship, 
we find and that's one of i think that's our last that's our last tactical we will find that when you enter into worship that is one of the quickest and most reverent ways to get into the holiest presence of God. And so as you continue to increase in your increase your faith and keep your focus on God, it causes you to worship. It begins to draw to you, you draw to him, and that is God's way of manifesting and increasing more faith. Worship. 22 By faith Joseph when he when his end was near spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. Highlighter underline by faith, Joseph. Highlighter underline. Spoke about the exodus and highlight or underline and gave instructions. So our faith We see Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the Exodus. Exodus basically means to exit. And we know in um, the book of Exodus, that's in reference to the children of Israel being coming out of bondage of Egypt, which is a lot that goes on there, but basically spoke about the Exodus. When they were broken out of bondage, when we read about Egypt, Egypt represents bondage. Egypt represents slavery. Egypt represents... Um, just anything it, you can equate it or natural of the negative in the sense because that is what was holding the children of Israel in bondage and so it says by faith he spoke about the exodus so let's say you're believing in God for a thing let's say you're believing in God for deliverance deliverance would be a form of when you when you stand on faith and when you are making faith statements uh whatever form of deliverance it may be deliverance from let me give you an example of deliverance so i use the term i used last week um no i don't want to use that deliverance okay let's say deliverance from any any form of habit any vice i'm not going to name you know any specific one but you can be believing in god for deliverance from something that is you know that it's not pleasing to god you know that it's something that uh is not representative of respecting your mind or your body anything that may be not pleasing to god we talked about you know i'm standing on um this bot the bot my body is the temple of the most high and so i am believing in God and standing and enacting faith and obedience to do better things, to eat better, to drink more water, um, different things like that. So we may have different vices that you say, I need deliverance from this, or if it's, you know, mental health, you know, I'll talk about that because I have coffee and connection that I do with my, with the nonprofit. You know, we talk about different forms of mental health and things like that. You may be standing and believing in God from, for deliverance from that. So your faith, it says Joseph spoke about the exodus. So your deliverance is a form of exodus. So when you speak about your faith is allowing you to speak about what you want to see. Call those things that be not as though they were. Your faith is a form of speaking about that exodus, speaking that healing, calling that healing into life, calling that deliverance into life, calling that whatever it may be. And it says, and gave instructions concerning your faith allows you to give instructions about your peace of mind. It allows you to give instructions about your future. It allows you to give instructions about your atmosphere. It allows you to give instructions about your situation. Those are decrees and affirmations. So your faith speaks. Your bottom line is your faith speaks. Um, But it also sees an end from the beginning, which is the Exodus. Your faith speaks about your Exodus. 11 and 23 by faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Highlight, by faith, Moses' parents hid him. Something flying in front of me. Moses' parents hid him. And then highlight, and they were not afraid. All right? 
So what does our faith do? It says, by faith, Moses' parents hid him. Boldness. That's a boldness. And it says they were not afraid. Righteous or bold as a lion. Your faith increases your boldness. Your faith increases your... And again, remember, our faith is always placed in who? God. Not the situation, not the thing. So when God says, let the weak say that I am strong, when we put our faith, we keep our faith in God, no matter what the situation is that comes to attack, that comes to bind, that comes to interfere, that comes to um, speak a lie, our faith creates strength. Our faith creates boldness. Our faith increases tenacity. By faith, Moses' parents hid him, and they were not afraid. So our faith increases our strength and our boldness. 11 and 24. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. All right. By faith, we're highlighting 11 and 24. By faith, Moses... And then highlight, refuse to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So, or you can just, actually, well, you can highlight all of that. Highlight, or, but, or refuse is the main thing. By faith, Moses refused. What did he refuse? He refused to be, so Moses was born an Israelite. We know his parents um, hid him from the king because the king had decreed that certain children from an age down were to be killed and that's why he was hid and mom and dad put him in a basket sent him up the Nile River and then the queen's um, servants ended up finding him and took him to the queen that's how he ended up being in Pharaoh's palace and becoming a part of that a, a, a part of that family but Moses as he grew up he kept God. He knew his people. And it says by faith, Moses refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh. So your faith, two things in that. His faith, no matter the circumstance or situation that he was placed in and put in, his faith kept him grounded in who he was. His spirit, his heart kept him knowing that I don't belong. This is not my people. I am not called here. I know who I am. So our faith always recalls and reminds us of who we are and whom we serve, which is God, because our faith stays in God, not the situation, not who we're surrounded by. So it says he refused. So your faith will cause you to refuse and reject anything that is not of God. So as you are, again, believing, as you are um, persevering as you are standing as you are being tested and tried your faith will refuse anything that does not line up with the will and the word of God so by faith Moses refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter 11 and 25 he chose I love this one and actually I'm going to read the King James version of this one too let me pull it up because I love this Oh, did my computer go down? It says 11 and 25. He chose to be mistreated among, along with the people of God, rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. All right. So highlight, he chose to be mistreated. We're in 11, 25. Um, Rather than and highlight, he chose to be mistreated and then highlight rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. And that entire scripture is important. But if you can look at what we're doing here, you're pulling together because we're learning to put ourselves in this is great to hear other people's testimony is great to read about what others did is great to read scripture and Bible, the inspired word of God, and to know that our ancestors, our forefathers and those in the faith before us did this. But how much greater is it to see ourselves in it? And so what we're doing is we're pulling apart the scripture and as we are getting encouraged and getting testimony from all those before us the reason i put it in red or i'm having you to highlight and underline is because again we said this is bible study bible study we study the bible and we are piecing together what fits us in there so that in our walk we can constantly stay in the now for our faith and in the now we can see ourselves and it becomes tangible and it becomes real so when you hear me say highlight or underline 
is key phrases, okay? And we're also showing exactly what your faith does in these key phrases. So for instance, we have 11 to 24, we said by faith, Moses refused. And we said, your faith will cause you to refuse what is not of God. Um, 1123, by faith, Moses' parents hid him and they were not afraid. Your faith increases your strength and, and, and a boldness in God. So your faith causes you to grow. Um, by faith, I'm just looking at some of by faith, 11 and 17, by faith, Abraham offered a sacrifice. Your faith, your now faith keeps you continual in offering a sacrifice, whether that's praise or your worship. Or remember, we talked about how Isaac represented. We said we may have some Isaacs in our lives. It's the thing that God blessed us with, or it's the thing that's in our life that, you know, God, I just don't know if I can lay this on the altar. I don't know, God, if I can give this up, you know. We are reminded that we are continually to make a sacrifice to God and to trust him with our Isaacs so that he can get to us what he wants us to have. So that's why we're going through and highlighting. Um, okay, so I was going to pull up. I said, we just read 1125. He chose to be mistreated rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. Go to that in the King James Version. Um, let's see and get to it y'all bear with me one second i got my little studio set up i'm scared if i move it everything will fall apart all right there we go hebrews because i want you to see specifically what it says in the king james hebrews All right, it says, what does it say, Kia? 11 and 25. So that's the NIV that I have in the uh, workbook. But I want to read 11 and 25. Like I said, I teach from the NIV, but I like to go to the KJV from time to time. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. I love what that says. So it says mistreated in the NIV, and that's absolutely true. Mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. And mistreated sounds good. We get an understanding of what mistreat means. But when you look at the King James Version, he, it says he chose rather to suffer affliction. When we hear the word suffer, that means he really endured and then affliction he really he really went through some things he chose to suffer afflic affliction i don't know why i can't talk tonight chose to suffer affliction with the people of god than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season so when moses allowed his faith in god to stay focused Remember, he, he came from, he basically was placed in royalty. He basically was placed in Pharaoh's palace and had everything he needed and desired at his fingertips. He could have easily said, I'll stay here. These are the people that have raised me. These are the people that have loved me. It's comfortable here. I have everything I need. I'm set up to be heir to the throne at one day, one day at some point in time, possibly. I'm good. But Moses' faith said, I will suffer affliction with the people of God, with my people, with the God that I serve, with the God that created me, rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. He knew that it was only for a season. His faith kept his focal point on God and in God and the purpose and the things of God. And so when our faith, understand that, again, your faith, what you are believing and seeking in God for, number one, is personal. That's between you and God. And what I mean by it's personal, is it always a secret? Some things are, some things you do keep quiet, some things you keep between God, but I don't necessarily mean like it's always a secret. When I say that it's personal, that's between you and God. What God tells you to do, John 2 and 5 says, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. That's not for justification from anyone else. That's not, I like to tell people, People won't understand your purpose because it's not theirs. Meaning, 
if God gave something to you to do, an idea, a thought, a vision, a plan, everyone's not going to see that vision because it's not their vision. It's like our eyes. You don't see what I see through my eyes. I don't see how you see through your eyes because they're your eyes. When God gives you faith for something, that is a very personal walk. And you are going to get in your faith, you're going to get tests. You're going to get adversity. You're going to get doubt. You're going to get mistreated. You're going to get mocked. You're going to get scorned. You're going to get laughed at. You're going to get told you're foolish. You're going to get told you're simple. You're going to get called all kind of things. That is between you and God because that is your now faith. Remember we talked about Noah and God told Noah to move in fear. For hundreds of years, he obeyed and told people and they did not listen. But he moved in fear, reverential fear in faith that God would do what he said he was going to do. And so choose like Moses did in 1125, no matter what comes, the affliction, what have you, what we're talking about things here tonight are persevering in faith. Continue to persevere. 11 and 26. Let me scoot this back over. Actually, let me leave it alone before it falls. 11 and 26. It says, he was regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. So we just talked about that. He regarded disgrace. So he understood, I am going to be ridiculed. I am going to be disgraced, but it is for the sake of my faith in God, not in the thing, not in the people, not in the palace, not in the... Uh, Pharaoh, not in my brother who I've grown up with. He said, I am going to regard disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value. His, your faith causes you to put greater value on the cross. Okay. Underline that under or highlight or underline in 11 and 26. He regarded disgrace for the sake of for he was he regarded disgrace for the sake of and then highlight a greater va wait a minute wait he regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ yes the entire thing he regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as as of greater value your faith reminds you to keep your eyes on the cross because there is greater value there Amen. And then you can also highlight he was looking for the reward. Okay. 11 and 27. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. Highlight by faith. He left Egypt. Highlight by faith, he left Egypt. Highlight, he persevered because he saw who saw him who is invisible. Your faith causes you to persevere. Your faith causes you to push through. Your faith, remember, we have a faith in the one that we can't see, which is God. Our faith, we walk by faith and not by sight. Our faith causes us to, okay, let me go back because it says by faith he left Egypt. Remember what we said Egypt represents? Bondage, poverty, heartache, heartbreak, negativity. Your faith causes you to leave behind the bondage, whatever it is that you're enduring, that deliverance, that healing, uh, financial breakthrough for freedom, whatever it is, your faith focused on God causes you to leave all of that behind it says also your faith causes you to persevere because he saw him who is invisible you keep your eyes on god Eleven twenty-eight. by faith he kept the passover and the application of the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of israel your faith keeps your faith 
keeps you in remembrance of the blood of Jesus. By faith he kept. Highlight by faith he kept. And then the application of the blood. Your faith will keep you focused on the blood of Jesus. Your faith will also, it talks about the destroyer of the firstborn. Your faith protects. Your faith protects. So you can highlight would not touch as a reminder there. So your faith protects. 1129, by faith the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. All right. Highlight by faith the people pass through. Your faith causes you to pass through. Again, we go back to the um, example of the bridge. Your faith causes you to get over it, walk over it, drive over it, swim through the water under it, fly over it. Your faith causes you to pass through. So remember that. Your faith causes you to pass and to surpass. And uh, it says... Highlight, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. Okay, now again, you see in there the word Egyptians. When we see that, it represents bondage that we've broken out of. And it says they were drowned. So your faith not only breaks you out of the things you are enduring, the things you are going through, the things you are trusting and believing in God for, out of bondage, out of deliverance, or your deliverance, your healing, your breakthrough, your strength, whatever breaks you out of that and then it says they were drowned your faith drowns out all of those things it wipes them out done over with takes care of it 11 and 30 by faith the walls of Jericho fell and we talked about this last week after the army had marched around them for seven days Highlight, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell. Okay. Remember we talked about this last week when we were talking about um, obedience. Was it obedience? No, it was, in, it was in week two that we talked about submission, about yielding. And we talked about the children of Israel marching around the walls of Jericho. And we talked about us having certain proverbial walls of Jericho in our life. And we talked about how those walls... When the children of Israel, first and foremost, they went out, they marched around it seven times. They weren't supposed to say anything, but they just played um, instruments. When it was time for the battle to ensue, they, they played instruments. The worshipers went forth. The praise went up. The shouts went up. And then the walls, instead of falling forward or falling backwards, the walls fell straight down into the earth. And they disappeared, never to come back. Your faith causes your proverbial walls of Jericho to fall. It causes them to just be disintegrated, to disappear, to be no more. And remember that coupled with that, we talked about that. What is going before? We're keeping our faith on God. But just like the children of Israel did walking around, marching around the walls of Jericho, they instituted praise and prayer and um worship to God and so your faith causes those walls to fall and then 1131 by faith the prostitute Rahab became because she welcomed the spies was not killed with those who were disobedient highlight and underline by faith and it says welcomed highlight welcomed the spies she welcomed what did you want me to do with this Holy Spirit okay highlight by faith the prostitute let's go over that Holy Spirit let's go over that by faith the prostitute and welcomed the spies was not killed with those who were disobedient so by faith, Rahab the harlot. So we know Rahab. Let's quickly talk about Rahab. Rahab was one of the inhabitants of Jericho. She was inside Jericho, lived in the city. And one night, Joshua and his men 
wanted to go in the city. Well, Joshua sent men to go spy out Jericho. And when they went to spy it out, Rahab recognized that they were not of the inhabitants of Jericho, that they were the children of Israel. And she could have easily turned them in, told on them, gotten them killed, told the whole plan, done and over with. Instead, she recognized she, now it's so significant that she says she was a prostitute. She recognized these men to be children of God. So your faith is going to, no matter who or how or what realm or area that it enters in, your faith is going to, remember we talked about our, our obedience, it affects and infects and impacts and is for all and so faith is a form of obedience and so even though Rahab was a prostitute a harlot someone that in general is looked down upon frowned upon faith said recognize the spirit of God no matter who you are what you are and that faith impacted that individual it impacted Rahab and Rahab recognizing that through faith she did not she was able to save her household because she helped the people of God and so it says she was not killed with those who were disobedient so remember we talked about again faith your obedience is wrapped up in faith and faith requires your obedience. And so basically Rahab through faith was found to not be disobedient. And it says to the saving of her household, she was able to be saved by her faith in what she saw in those who kept their faith in God. Okay, so that makes sense. So your faith will impact and affect even the darkest of places and your faith will cause your faith will cause obe will cause you to walk in obedience will call the call those to walk in will call others to walk in obedience let me look at some of my notes here 16 So I'm just jotting over my notes or reading over my notes here because that's really all I want to uh, touch on tonight. And I want you to, I don't know what you got out of it in your reading time, but I want you to, in your journal and notes tonight, just kind of meditate over it some more and put yourself where we highlight it or where you see it it's in red to put yourself in that position for the things that you are believing in god for faith and how that impacts or affects your belief system or what you're believing in god for um so i have 11 and 23 faith present I, you can jot these these are some notes that i had directly also for 11 and 23 for that scripture i had your faith protects and hides you 11 and 25 your faith endures and humbles you 11 and 29 your faith increases faith yes because we saw that the Red Sea was parted so that's another situation of they were given faith to trust and believe in God, to follow the man of God out of Egypt. And then God parted the Red Sea, which increased their faith. All right. And then 11 and 30, it says faith is victory. The walls of Jericho fell. Faith is victory. And then I have some other notes. But so what I did, so last night I said to I gave you all of 16 through 40 to read last night. Like I said, what what God gave me as I was doing the rest of this workbook is we're going to have one more night of reading the uh, faith chapter, breaking it down. So tonight is 11 through 31. I'm going to stop at 31 and then go back over 11 on worksheet 20. Tomorrow will be a short one. And then we're going to talk about... 21 you're going to go through 1132 through 1140 tonight i know you already did that but just recap 
what I just highlighted tonight, study that out, meditate on that. So the ideal is I printed mine black and white, but I did, I don't know, you know, for the sake of not printing ink, uh, losing ink, you know, we're all on quarantine and kind of stuck at home. So, you know, I don't know if you all are downloading or print it, but I'll print mine and for the sake of saving ink, but I'll go back and I highlight. So anywhere that you see it highlighted, it's going to be printed. It's going to be in red in the actual workbook. And the goal of that is a and like I said, we talked about our now faith. We're reading this faith chapter and we're looking at all these great men and women of God, these martyrs for Christ, these believers who they weren't given a thing in advance to say, you know, hey, here's motivation to do what to go ahead and do what I need you to do, says God. He says, no. I just need you to go do it and I promise you you're going to get something when you get there. And so we're encouraging ourselves, we're standing on the word, we're increasing our own faith by, that's what the Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we are reading and studying the word of God to increase our faith, but we are also, the reason I highlight it bolded in red is because when you cut and pull the pieces, I want you to see yourself in there. And so while we're breaking it down in that manner, uh, faith increases, faith endures, faith perseveres, faith faith. Um, obeys. We're studying that out. Tomorrow's worksheet, worksheet 20, is now faith is suffering because there's a little bit of suffering involved in having faith. Having strong faith in God does require a little bit of suffering. And we just read that tonight uh, with Moses in Hebrews 11 and uh, 25. Where it says he chose he chose to suffer affliction with the people of God rather than take pleasure in sin for a season. So tomorrow we're going to talk about that suffering and what we gain. Because remember again, back in Hebrews eleven, is that seven, eleven six, actually I believe it is eleven and six. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards them who earnestly seeks him. And because we have an enemy of our souls, then we have to understand and we have to know that the enemy is not going to just happily sit by and let us skip through the field sniffing daisies and just obtain the promise just that easy. Remember, again, we go back to Joshua and one God told Joshua only be strong and of good courage. You're going to win. I'm going to give you every battle. You're going to win it. Every victory. I just need you to be strong and good courage. I just need you to have faith. I just need you to obey and have faith. I need you to have faith to obey. But there will be suffering. And so tomorrow night, we're going to talk about our now faith and how suffering coupled with that we can still endure, we can still obey, we can still persevere, and we can still get through. And so we're going to look at a study of those that suffered and what their faith brought them to. All right. So that is all I have for you tonight. Um, we got some more interactive worksheets towards the end of the week. But right now, we're just chopping away at this faith chapter. It is one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, especially for faith. It is just amazing to read. You know, some of the things that, again, these, the, those that gone, have gone on before us in the faith, what they stood on and, you know, and think about it. They did not, they did not, they, they did not have the Bible. <laughs> they didn't have the Bible. They didn't have what we have. We have a blueprint. Now, granted, they have, and, and we have, we have the presence of God. We have the Holy Spirit, but we have a blueprint. This is their blueprint. This is their letter to us. This is their strategy. This, what is it? Game plan. When you have like a football or basketball and the coaches have a playbook, this is our playbook. And this is the faith playbook right here. And we are going through and we are pulling out the, the, the notes and we are pulling out all the plays and we are pulling out all of the, I don't know a whole lot of sports, um, lingo but you guys get me when I say playbook so that's what we're doing so we are so go over the last two nights and look at 
uh, go back over, meditate again, read on Hebrews 11, just read it through and go back through 11 and one. We talked about faith. Now faith is obeying 11 through six, six, 11, 16 through 31. Now faith is persevering. And then tomorrow now faith is suffering. And don't get afraid of that word suffering because God says, I'm going to reward you. I got you. Number one, he says, I I've covered you. Remember, we just read, we just read right here. Don't be afraid of the suffering because we just read in Phil uh, Philippians, uh, Hebrews 11 and 28, by faith, he kept the Passover and the application of the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. We said our faith protects. Our faith reminds us of the blood of Jesus Christ. Okay, so we are extracting all of those things that our faith offers and allows us. And again, remember, faith is now. And my now faith, coupled with the fact that I keep my faith on God and not in the things that I'm enduring or going through or believing in, I'm going to be all right. I just have to keep my eyes on God. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close out. I have to get ready. I have to get a little bit of rest because I have a all night prayer call that I'll be on tonight. And so um, I'm going to offer the prayer of salvation. If anyone has any prayer requests, then please go ahead and put them in the comments and I will pray for you. If it's personal, personal, then inbox me. And um, other than that, I always close out offering Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. He is the reason that we are doing all of this. Romans 10, 9 through 10 says that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus died and rose, then we will be saved. And so I will pray that prayer for anyone that wants to ask Jesus Christ to come into their life, who wants, you know, maybe you need, there's questions on your heart for what is going on in the world right now. Maybe you feeling alone. Maybe you're feeling afraid. Maybe you're uncertain. Jesus says he can handle all of that. He says he wants to take all of your cares and care for you. He says he wants you to lay your anxiety down and not be worried or stressed about anything. He's like, I got it all. Just accept me. Just ask me to come in and I'll take it all. So I'm going to pray that prayer. And I want you to say what I pray. So speak it after me because it says you have to believe in your heart and you have to confess say it with your mouth and after that I will close out with prayer and then I will see you all tomorrow at 7 so Father God in the name of Jesus Lord I come before your throne just giving you all praise glory and honor Lord you said in your word that if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead, then I will be saved. Lord, I confess, I believe. And Lord, I confess, I believe. And Lord, I confess that I receive your son Jesus now. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. Heal me. Deliver me. Make me whole. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for all those, Lord God, who have spoken life this evening, who have chosen life this evening. I thank you, Father, for just the peace that passes all understanding that is encompassing them right now in this very moment. And that will continue, Lord God, to allow them to feel the very burdens that they've been carrying to be lifted, Lord God. May, Lord God, tonight be the most sweetest sleep and peaceful slumber that they've had, Lord God, in the longest of ever, Lord God. Let your presence be known, Father. For all those watching, Lord God, let your presence be known. Let your peace encompass and encamp about them. Lord, as we are learning to have faith in you, Father God, which is our complete trust and confidence, Lord God, without proof, we know that the word of God is valid proof and it is the truth, Lord God. And we trust in that. And we thank you that you are pleased with us because you said without faith, it is impossible to please you. But because we are reading your word, because we are studying your word, because we have accepted your son, we have faith in you.
three and five that we are to not lean to our own understanding but to acknowledge you in all our ways and then you will direct and guide our paths so thank you father god in the name of jesus for allowing that for us lord i thank you lord god for just your grace and your mercy i thank you father god for the word that has been spoken and received lord god and i thank you that we go our several ways lord god in in authority in victory and in strength and knowledge lord god according to your will and your word in jesus name i pray amen amen thank you i receive Arthenia. i receive that and uh, i'll tell you guys what the last three nights i don't know if you caught it um i said it a couple nights ago i got a wave of dizziness and then i spoke against it while i was on here the last three nights only when i get on here I get a wave of dizziness and I find that I am my speech. I, it it seems like I'm stumbling over my speech. And so I rebuke that I ain't afraid of the devil, but I just put it out there for my warrior women. I know you all are standing and praying for me. I'm just going to put the devil. I'm going to shame the devil. He's trying to literally attack me on live the last three nights that's happened. And so I ain't afraid of the devil. I speak against it. I plead the blood of Jesus. I am covered and I am protected and I put the devil on blast. The last three nights, I literally get a wave of dizziness when I'm sitting on here. Doesn't happen all day long, but I sit here on this bed. And then, like I said, also, it just seems like, um, seems like I'm struggling for words sometimes. So just... I put the devil on blast, lift me up in prayer, and uh, God's got me. Because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. In the name of Jesus, every tongue that rises against me, I speak against it. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And uh, I curse every demonic act and action that is attempting to speak against the will and the word of God. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus. So Holy Spirit... I yield to you. I thank you for your healing virtue. I thank you, God, that I speak life in the name of Jesus. I shall not die, but live and continue to declare the good works, the testimony, the faith, the promises of the Lord, my God, who is with me. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. All right, ladies, I'm going to get out of here and I am going to get some rest in the name of Jesus. Thank you. I'm going to get some rest because I have a um, prayer call that I'll be on tonight and it is a all night prayer call. And um, I'm going to (laughs) rest. So read your assignments tonight. And I love you, ladies. And I have a surprise for you all, too. So um, you'll find out in the next few days. But I have a surprise for you all. But um, I love you all. And I'll see you tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Same time, okay? Have a good night.